I understand that before the causeway was built, which links Venice to the mainland, this was the main entrance from the mainland. I don't know how this chap missed us. I think we must have been stood still or going backwards or something. Torcello doesn't look a good bet, does it, this afternoon? I thought it might brighten up. But no, it hadn't, and it's about four o'clock now anyway. We're passing here one of the few remaining boatyards in Venice, and here we are seeing something which could have been seen at any time in the past for over a thousand years. As for today, the trip to Torcello was very reluctantly abandoned. There is now a gap in the record and in my memory of two and a half hours because I next find myself right down near the Rialto at the church of San Salvador. Baroque facade, Renaissance interior. Begun in 1508 by Giorgio Spavento and completed by Tullio Lombardo and Sansovino. Over the altar, Transfiguration by Titian. Also by Titian at the age of 89, Annunciation. Also to be seen here, the tomb of Doge Francesco Venier and the tomb of the Queen of Cyprus. I wish I had time to tell you why, but it's all part of the story of Venice at its height. The man in black, second right, is the banker Girolamo Priuli, who paid for the painting. This brings us to the end of Tuesday, one day left. Wednesday, our last day, starts with, um, I think, a guillemot. I'm hitching a ride down the Grand Canal, hoping that my 24-hour ticket is still valid. If you were beginning to think that we'd escaped the Normans in this episode, well, just one mention. Around 1081, having secured much of southern Italy, the Normans actually decided to take on the Byzantine Empire. They crossed the Adriatic, took Corfu, and headed for Constantinople. The Adriatic and the Dalmatian coastline had really become by now a Venetian reserve, and a fleet was sent down from Venice to disperse the Normans, with mixed results, but that's for another day. just made it. I decided to get off at the Rialto. Now then, is that the dog we saw sat in the shop doorway the other day? That's Giacometto again. Early morning in the Rialto markets. The tour of the palace starts at 11, so we're going to see what we can before that time. It might help here if I explain that in the old days there was a pastry shop near here which used fava beans in its pastries. And we pass here Santa Maria della Consolazione. Some people call it Santa Maria della Fava but usually it's just La Fava. Volgo, as they say here. This building was uh, started in 1705 by Antonio Gaspari and was finished about 50 years later by Giorgio Massari. The statues in the niches are of saints and evangelists and are by Toretto, who was the master of Canova. This present building replaced what has been described as a wooden hut built in 1480. This original church had been built to house an icon of the Madonna 
which had been found in a house nearby and which was also found to work miracles. The icon is said to be small, dark and hard to see, so I think this must be a facsimile. There was no one here checking that one didn't use a camera, so we were able to have a nice relaxed look around and took pictures of several paintings. The first one we mention here, and which we are practically certain about, is Education of the Virgin by G.B. Tiepolo. Mary is seen reading with her mother, whilst her father looks up in understandable amazement at the heavenly host above her. We are also pretty certain about the Virgin appearing to Saint Philip Neri. We believe this to be by Giambattista Piazzetta. But we also saw this one which appears to be on the same subject but which we fail to identify positively. Though whilst attempting to do so we found this other picture which we didn't see but which also appears to be on the same subject. Incidentally, I understand that St. Philip Neri was a 16th century Roman who helped develop modern sacred music, and this church is also dedicated to this saint.